I'm Edie Lush and I'm here in the Hub Pavilion in Davos and I'm very pleased to be joined by John Rose, Senior Partner Managing Director at Boston Consulting Group in the US. Tell me, what's your thought at Davos here about big data, big theme here? One of the themes that's really been big over the last few days is this whole question of the incredible potential associated with using data. Um, but interestingly in all those conversations, um, there are a few elements that are not as um, transparently vocal in the conversations, meaning under what circumstances are organizations going to be allowed to use data, particularly data about consumers. Um, and the default in all of those discussions are, the answer is, well, we'll just ask for permission and we will create opt-in permissions. That's great, but if anybody ever added up the number of times consumers are going to be asked to, permission, to, to provide permission and the reality of how consumers actually spend their time, mm -hmm. that's really an unworkable model across all of the permissions that they expect consumers to be managing. It's almost a full-time job. Can you give me an example about what you're talking about? For almost every new use or new application, I'd like to use your shopping data to yeah. be able to market to you things you might be interested mm -hmm. in. Will you give me permission? Um, I, you shop at, you watch television, mm -hmm. and I can watch your TV patterns, and by the way, then be able to recommend TV shows or mm -hmm. movies or books or other content that mm -hmm. you might be interested in. Will you provide permission? Mm -hmm. Third parties might be interested in knowing that as they market goods and services. Can I offer mm -hmm. those services to them? Right. There's a whole debate around the answer to what can you or can't you do is very simple. Just ask the consumer. It's really interesting, though. The consumer is actually never in the room when everybody's saying, and the right. answer is go ask the consumer. Right. Now, how deeply do you read the 46-page subscription agreements that require you to use websites? Asking permission right. is not easy. No. And you usually just scroll to the bottom quickly and check it and yeah. on you go, right? Because otherwise you can't use the service. And then people get extraordinarily surprised and upset when they find out that the organizations that they're providing information to by the transactional services that they provide, and this is not a Facebook and Google issue or mm. a Twitter issue. This is a, I'm looking at the news. Mm -hmm. I'm shopping on a website. And it's not just a digital issue, it's I'm going into the store to buy groceries. Um, yeah. The ability to take data out of transactional legacy systems and combine it with other data to figure out that you are in your second trimester of pregnancy, mm -hmm. here are mm -hmm. pregnancy coupons, sounds really cool, except you might not know, want the world to know that you're yeah. in your second trimester of pregnancy. Right. And I no longer have to ask you, and you no longer have to tell me. Mm -hmm. So there's this huge debate about what you can do and what you can't do. At stake are hundreds of billions of dollars of economic value and even more social value because we all get value as consumers when we are able to read things for free, buy things at lower prices, and all of that's predicated on the use of data. And while this isn't new, companies have been using data on consumers for decades, the intensity and pace and also acuity of you personally is new. Mm -hmm. um, and at the core of this debate is the question of, do you regulate the data or do you regulate the usage? So I am fascinated by this and I was speaking to a CEO of a company that does a lot of loyalty cards mm -hmm. and we were talking about how you get to a, situ a, <clears throat> a world in which you're paid properly or paid in money, some kind of mm -hmm. financial terms for your data. Do you think we might move towards that word? It's a, it's a different than being paid in air miles or something. Sure. And there are definitely some business models for some usages of data that will be that. Mm -hmm. But let's take it in a different direction. Should a healthcare system have the ability, without asking permission, to use data on, let's say, stroke treatments for all of the patients they've treated uh, for strokes over a decade? in order to be able to figure out whether they're better treatment protocols. Mm -hmm. They don't really need to know it's you, but they need to know everything that was medically relevant yeah. about you in order to figure out whether there's a treatment protocol. Mm -hmm. And if they ask you, and let's say 10% of the use say no, they now have a biased data set and they can't be sure right. that what comes out of their analytics is in fact valuable. Mm -hmm. Now the end of that is people get better faster, Healthcare costs are lower, so there are huge personal social benefits. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, you can't ask permission. 
But if you can't ask permission, how do you know you have the ability to use it? And what are the rules around ensuring that it is only used for that and it never gets identified and, for example, used by an insurance company to decide you can't get insurance? So this, it, it's, it, there are definitely examples of, particularly in things like retail, if you provide me the information, I'll pay you for it mm -hmm. in one way or another. Like, for every $5 you spend, you'll get $2 of mm -hmm. <coughs> free goods no matter what. Or I'll actually pay you cash or something else. That certainly will work in a retail context. Mm -hmm. But it won't work in a healthcare context. And mm -hmm. in, that is, in fact, the fundamental issue here. The rules, discussion, and dialogue need to move from the data. Because when people have this discussion about data, they have a context in mind, but everybody has a different context in mind. It has to move from data, which is about ownership, to usage, which is about under what circumstances can organizations do what. Because it has to span healthcare, financial services, marketing, the internet, legacy data, data that you volunteer, data that actually is observed about you. In the, in the, in the US, your picture is in general taken somewhere between six and 12 times a day. Mm -hmm. And you don't know it's being taken. And it's being taken for all sorts of reasons. You walk into a store, it's security. Mm -hmm. Well, I can now identify you because I can take that picture, right. tie it to facial recognition software, identify who you are, where you live, tie it to all sorts of information. And by the time you're four steps in the door, if I've built the systems capability, I actually know what you're there to buy. It's allowable or not allowable? Right. How do you decide? So. This three-day period has been a really rich conversation mm -hmm. with lots of differing points of view, different opinions um, on this topic. I slightly feel like running from the room screaming, but I'm not going to. I'm <laughs> going to say thank you very much, Don, for taking it's the time pleasure. to it's come into Hub Culture here in Davos. I'm Edie Lush.